All right, guys, this is Vijay, your host. So today's topic is we are going to discuss about the VRF leaking in ACI. Uh, many of the students have requested uh, this concept uh, with the lab, explain them like how they are VRF looking is working in ACI and how you know we can achieve in a different, different scenario. For example, you have the same uh, tenant and the different tenant. So in my first scenario, I have a, a tenant, uh, tenant common, common, and I have VRF again is a common. The scenario is I have a layer three out, which is uh, running the OSPF between the uh, leaf switch to the uh, my firewall. And I have uh, area zero, and which is uh, running up and running, which means if I go to the my uh, device and show this to you, ACI diag FNB read, I have list switch three. If I show the attach, Here, and if I go to the uh, so VRF, sorry, so VRF, so IP OSPF neighbor VRF, uh, I have a common where I have OSPF running up and running with the my firewall here. But if I see that currently, if I say so IP route VRF uh, common, a lot of uh, so IP route OSPF. We are a common. So currently, uh, zero route is coming from the my neighbor. Uh, just give me a second. We are a common. If you see that uh, currently zero route is coming from the external, it means uh, my advertisement is zero from the external to the internal. It means we are not advertising any route from the uh, external network to my inside uh, ACI. So though I have under the ACI external EPG layer three out, I do have a 0, .0, 0 0.0.0, which means I'm telling ACI accept everything, whatever it is coming, but firewall is not advertising any routes for me. I can show the quickly my layer three out, how layer three out is forming with my uh, common tenant. If I go to the tenant and uh, I have common tenant, and if I go to the uh, networking, I do have a, a, this as a tenant where I have, you know, uh, forming where I'm forming the OSPF neighborship with the, my firewall, which is connecting to my leaf three and four. And I'm using the SVI uh, to 2022. And I have external EPG in the external EPG. If you see that I have 0 .0 .0, 0 0.0.0 route export also. I'm saying that, you know, receive all the routes without any issue. Now, the major thing is how this same tenant route advertisement works. What I had going to do here is I will create one a BD and this is the BD deep, uh, and the EPG details. And I will try to advertise this BD subnet within the same tenant you uh, to the external network, to the external network here like this. Okay, for the same tenant, how you do that. So if I go to the my lab, if I create the bridge domain, for example, here, if I say that uh, BD testing test, and I will say VRF is common for me next, then I will add that unicast routing enable and I will add the subnet call that uh, 100 dot 100 dot 100 dot 10 slash 24. I will say advertise externally. I'm not going to set the share between the VRF because everything is in the same tenant, everything. Then I will say next, done. Once you do that, if you want to advertise this particular bridge domain to the external network within the same tenant, what you have to do here is you have to associate the layer three out. Layer three out, you have to associate here. So currently, if I show you that routing to my table in my switch here, so IP route, so IP route for 100.100.100.10 VRF. If I say that VRF is this one, so me the VRF for this one. So currently my leaf switch is saying that this particular subnet you have created acting as a bridge domain and not advertising anywhere else. Now, if I go to the layer bridge domain and say that 
you know what? I want to advertise this subnet to the externally. You know, because I have said the external advertisement. So the moment I will say that here, it will say that you are advertising the OS, the subnet to the OSPF. Let's see here, look here. One line has been added saying that this subnet is being advertised via the, this particular interface, this particular interface, nothing, just a layer three out interface of the, uh, of my leap switches. If I go to the SBI and this is the SBI interface, now, dot 26. This is the secondary interface side B interface. Okay. Now, one more thing you will see that in the bridge domain, in the bridge domain, there is option called advertise externally. If I uncheck this advertise externally, your route advertisement will be stored with, doesn't matter whether you have associated the layer three out or not under the BRI. The moment I uncheck that, this particular advertisement must be stopped. Look here, immediately has been removed. So this is the basic of uh, your, uh, within the same tenant, if you want to advertise your uh, bridge domain to the external network, this is how you do that. What if you uh, you have a MPLS and uh, you have some kind of scenario, second scenario, where you have a, this scenario. You have a common tenant where you have MPLS or you know firewall or ISP is connected and you have another tenant where you have a subnet and that tenant subnet want to talk to the inter internet. For example, here is 8.8.8. .8. In this case, how you should be doing that, the routing between the inter tenant. Okay, so what I will do here is, I already have the tenant and layer three out common. I have a tenant in the uh, ACI defend tenant, this production tenant. I will create the one bridge domain and I will try to set the, uh, advertisement of 200 subnet into the my uh, into my uh, layer three out which I have. Okay, in my layer three out we have. If this is the scenario, then how the route advertisement will work for it in this scenario? Let's take a look because in the same tenant we advertise it that just associated the layer three out under the bridge domain, and once associate the layer three out, it will automatically advertise the ten the configuration now. The second thing is you will have to create the contract in the same tenant between the external EPG to the internal EPG and the external EPG always must be the provider and the standard EPG must be consumer in case of the layer three out communication. In terms of the EPG, EPG communication, any EPG can be provider and consumer, but in terms of the layer three to EPG communication, layer three out must be provider, layer and standard EPG must be consumer. Right. I hope this is clear. Let's take a look between the tenant, how the, and between the VRF, how the communication should work. Between the tenant and VRF is same concept. Now, what I will have here is I have another tenant. The tenant has a, uh, I will create, I'll have this tenant, there is no VRF, I will create one VRF. I will give VRF uh, is MHS. Okay, I will associate, I will uncheck the bridge domain, I will not create for now. Once I created one VRF, I will create one bridge domain from here. And that bridge domain is, uh, I'm going to give the subnet. Uh, sorry, uh, my bad. I should not be creating here. I have one VRF MHS. This is the testing. I will create one bridge domain. And then under the bridge domain, I will create that MHS for test. Okay, VRF, I will already have that MHS. Then I will also create the one subnet saying that 200.200.200.10 slash 24. Advertise externally is must. Okay. Done. Once you create that, I will create one EPG also. Let me just give me a second, guys. Let me delete that uh, the VR which I created, uh, which is not required for us here. MHS. If I go to the uh, bridge domain, this is fine. I will create one EPG, which is already have created one test EPG. Under the test EPG, I have to assume, I will create the EPG the application profile. I will create one EPG. EPG, we call that MHS test. I will associate this EPG to the my BD, which I've created test, finish it. Once I've done that, if you see that this particular subnet, if I try to go to the bridge domain and try to associate the layer three out under it, in the same tenant, if I associate the layer three out here, we used to see the routing over here, right? Here. 
Now, if you see that here, uh, 200 submit, if I go to the 200 dot submit, 200 dot 200 dot 200, you will see that currently uh, my route is not advertising under the OSPF like this one. Currently, uh, my leaf three is showing that this particular subnet, whatever you're writing, is coming from the spine switches as a overlay and direct a recursive subnet. It means this is a, this is a just a big this domain IP address, nothing else. Now, if I go to the my here and remove this one, remove this because if you're having an in common tenant and you have a, a bridge domain different tenant different VRF and you want to advertise, you do not need to associate the layer three out under it. This is the very important. Okay, you just have to select the shared between the VRF. Okay. That's the first requirement along with external advertisement. Then you have to create the contract, contract between the where, between the standard EPG and the external EPG here. You have to create the contract. The moment you will create the contract, you, this subnet will be start advertising into the layer three out between the tenants. So, so that contract must be created under the common tenant. Okay, that's a prerequisite. You cannot create the contract anywhere else, you must have to create the contract under the common tenant, then use that contract under the layer three out as a provider. If I go to the, under the provider here, here, contract, I will set as a provider. Test. Then I will go to the, uh, my EPG and set that as a consumer. The moment I will say it as a consumer, you will see that this 200 submit will be automatically advertising under the OSPF. Look here, uh, just give me a second. Uh, did I mistake something? Uh, let me associate layer three out, sorry, bridge domain. I will tell this bridge domain, you have the layer three out. Okay. Then, right now, uh, just give me a second. So there is something wrong with it. What is wrong with it? Saying that uh, you cannot resolve that target name relation. Okay, there is some issue with the uh, Just give me a second. Let me recreate the bridge domain. Okay. Uh, I will create the one new bridge domain. I will say that uh, test BD. Then I will associate this VRF to here. Let me just test. I think. Then I will associate this particular 200 subnet 200, 200, 10.10. Uh, uh, 10 dot 10 slash 24. Let's give a different subnet, advertise between them. And uh, then, then I will associate the same this domain under the uh, this new EPG, which is which was wrongly associated. Test BD submit. Then I will check that what is happening here. No, it's the wrong subnet. So yeah, I will check that the new subnet, which is uh, dot ten dot ten, I think ten dot ten. Yeah, if you see that, look here. I have not associated anything in the layer three out in the bridge domain. If you see that here, the previously naming convention was conflicting. So if you see that I have not associated any layer three out in the, the tenant. But it's still, but still, my uh, EPG is forming the contact and advertising this route outside. Now, if I remove the contact from EPG, this route advertisement will automatically stop. If I remove this one, my route advertisement will be immediately stopped. This is one thing you will see here. Now, if I add it back as a consumer, my route advertisement will be start working again. 
look here. Now, same thing if I go to the bridge domain and if I uncheck, if I uncheck the once advertisement said between the VRF, okay? Say between the VRF, if I uncheck, what will have be, what will be the impact here? What's what's saying that that has been removed advertisement under the OSPF has been removed between the VRF because we have we are having a two VRF common VRF and non common VRF and we are checking the, all the routing in a common VRF. Okay, again it's advertisement done. So this is how you uh, uh, do the inter VLAN we inter VRF leaking in ACI between the tenants. What if you have the same tenant uh, with you know uh, and two VRFs? Okay, so let's create another ten, another VRF. I will say that uh, VRF uh, test two. Okay, sorry, preview. I will not create here, and I will create another bridge domain. I will say that test two BD. Okay, then I will associate this test two VRF. I will associate one more submit called a 300 submit, 300.300.10.10 slash 24. Okay. Uh, why is... I will say, say between the VRF, well and fine. This is just between the VRF, between the two EPGs. If you want to do it, you just have to create the contract between the two VRF and you have to set the under the subnet VRF leaking must be set. Must be set. This is the major subnet advertisement. You have to set that. So I hope this uh, video help you to understand that uh, how the VRF leaking work between the tenants, especially for the common tenant and the non default tenant. And uh, how the you know same tenant EPG uh, need to be associated with the layer three out. And if you're having the this domain in different tenant, you do not need to associate the layer three out in any circumstances. You just need to create the contract between them. And the contract provider will be always external external layer three out, and consumer will be your uh, EPGs. I hope this uh, video help you to understand that the flow of the ACI. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in next session.